Y'all not gonna believe this. Welcome to Deb Snell's What Is World. And I did a whole video on Candy Brewers, her two restaurants, her going around here worrying about explaining herself to the social media group on why ICE is charged on the menu. And that she's not cheating anybody and it you know it's not her fault and she done got the um person oh how did i burn myself right down a broken vein anyway i sat up here and talked about maybe 20 minutes strong and child the thing was not even recording can you understand it the thing was not even recording so I can't give y'all what I gave y'all. Maybe I wasn't supposed to give it to you. <laughs> it might be the Lord just saying. No. All the stuff you just said about this lady. No. It's not going to compute. But I'm just going to like why Candy. Me and Cat Williams really want to know. Why are you out here basically. Telling the world. Or trying to explain to the world. Why. Uh, you, you have ice and it has to be charged because of the liquor surcharge and you got to have this equation match it up with how much you're supposed to pour in the glass for the liquor. Do you really think people caring about their candy? They ain't caring about that. They, com they coming up to your restaurant to have a nice time, good food, good conversation, good atmosphere, and some good drinks. They want to get drunk candy pretty much. They don't want to worry about how many ice cubes need to go in the drink for it to balance off correctly. And that you will be okay with charging $4. Come tell anybody, uh-uh, ain't nobody going to pay no $4 candy. If they see that on their bill, you're going to have an issue every time. Because if not come, I don't want no cold unless you got a cold ginger ale up there and it's just icy. I can just see it. And then you can just pour it in now. Okay, that's a whole different other scam of things. But if it's lukewarm, can I need some ice cubes? And I don't want to be charged for them. Or just say if I want some water. I don't want no bottled water. I want tap water. Okay? I know the tap water don't come out like it's getting out there in um, Antarctica somewhere. When you pour it out, it's just, ooh, it's just so cold. You know what I'm saying? It's going to give me a freeze in the brain. You know what I'm saying? No, it's going to be kind of lukewarm. You're going to need those ice cubes to chill it up a little bit, Candy. That's all I'm saying. Chilling it up a little bit. All right. You're going around here buying all these different buildings, trying to build up your empire, and then... You got all this stuff coming at you. Is it fair? No. Is it warranted? Somewhat. You can't open up businesses such as restaurants and think you cannot abide by the laws of approval of inspections. You know? You got to make sure everything is kosher up to point and up to standards because you got people hands People lives in your hands when you patron people with food. Food poisoning. Look it up. Do that candy. Look up Google food poisoning and see where you and your restaurants fall negatively with trying to prevent that situation from happening. You're sitting up here worried about a surcharge. $4 for some ice on Mr. Ryan Williams' bill that happened to him twice. Should have... Should he have put it on social media and embarrassed the hell out of you? Sure, he should not have not. No, he should have went to the establishment, talked to the general manager or manager on charge. And then if things weren't resolved, then seek to seek you out personally before he blasts you out on social media. But we know he got his 15 minutes of fame. He did what he had to do. He blasted you. It got back to you or got back to your team, however you want to say it. And whew, here we are. Making videos, other videos, other videos. That's what we do as vloggers, you know. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. But for you to take the time to come out here and tell us about how you go about putting ice into some liquor. And how it's supposed to make it make sense. We don't want to know about that, can it? We really don't. Because we're going to always come back to you. No matter how many Google sites you tell us to search. Or internet places you want us to go. To something we could care literally least about. We trying to get drunk. We ain't trying to understand how you become a bartender. And how you're supposed to have certain things. Where certain liquor is going. A certain amount of liquor is going in. And this is what you're supposed to charge per 
ounce or whatever to the Patreon for this high top shelf liquor that you're trying to serve us. We don't care about that game. We just want to get smashed pretty much. Have a good time. We don't want to know about the sp- uh the different aspects it's got to get us to that point. That's something you and the general manager need to work out. We just come there or your patrons just come there for a good atmosphere, good food, good company, good entertainment if you have it, and good drinks, Candy. They don't want to be bombarded with no $4 ice charge. I don't know where it came from. I'm going to say it was a slip up. Okay, because I'm, I'm like that too. If I would have saw that on my bill, I would have been raising hell up in there. I would have been calling CBS, NBC, CNN, uh, the police, <laughs> Jesus. I, girl. I would have a connection over there. I'm like, how you, how you, let me go down to the convenience store, get me a bag of ice that costs less than $4, and come back and let me serve everybody up at my table, okay? Because we ain't paying no four. We ain't paying no four. We ain't got the five, we ain't paying no four. And I heard some people saying, well, you know, if you had to go and ask um, how much something costs, you don't need it. That's a damn lie. Nope. Because I'm going to tell you a little story. I always wanted a little bit of soup, and a shout out to the Jasmine brand, okay? Shout out to this OLG. Ooh, so many violations, so many violations they had at OLG with temperatures not being this, that, and third. Slime and the, um, some kind of pink slime and the, um, ice bucket bin, you know, where you get your ice from. And score a 7-8-C. That's, that's terrible, terrible. Then you got a, a not even a 100. You got a low 90. You know, it's almost like an A-, minus. okay? And then in B. That's where we at. We at so far B. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But you sitting out here talking about some Hennessy. Uh, and where the ice placement is supposed to be and, and all this stuff. No, no, no. But let me tell you something. Went to Louis Vuitton down at Lenox Mall. Because I'm, I'm from Atlanta. Little native. Okay. And I, I was hanging around some people that was like up, up, upper shalon. You know, upper class. Uh, as well as, the, you know, they did a certain lifestyle under my normal lifestyle. I wasn't poor, but I wasn't rich either. You know what I'm saying? I was like the kind of middle class. But the kind I was hanging with, they was, you know, balling. Okay? They were the rich. Rich and famous. No, they're probably not rich and famous, but they, you know, had lawyers and doctors, you know, as parents and stuff of that nature. Anyway, we went out of Lynn's Mall one time, and, you know, we, they were shopping in different stores and whatnot. And they said, well, let's go on Louis Vuitton. I need a Louis Vuitton. I was like, damn, okay. Let's go on Louis Vuitton. I'm looking kind of suspect because I ain't got a dollar to my name. But, hey, I was rolling with the big dolls. I worked with the big dolls, so we went up in there. Met this little lady, Chinese lady, Asian lady, however you want to see. And I was, she was just trying to show us all the purses that, you know, we wanted to look at, and such as myself. You know, I had to partake. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm shopping at Kmart, Woolworths. You know, places like that. We didn't have Walmart at the time. So we had Kmart, uh, Woolworth, Learners, places like that. Okay, I can't think of all because I'm showing my age when I go back that far. But anyway, I went in there, you know, I was just looking around. So, ooh, Lord, ooh, ooh, that's what they called. I mean, I already knew the pocketbooks at the time in the 80s. They were like five or six hundred dollars. Now they go about a thousand because I finally got my little baton. Okay, but at the time I couldn't get it because I, you know, I was asking for layaway. I was asking how much did car, how much that car, and the Asian lady was just so nice. She said, "Baby, I know you. you you're gonna get one one day. I, I just see it in you." She said, "You ain't got the funds right now. That's okay. We don't have our layaway, and don't tell nobody else you see it. Okay?" She gave me a nice little thick book that talked about how you make the Louis Vuitton purses and this and the third and the ones, the one that I wanted was the LV. Uh, one that was brown bucket bag, whatever. And at the time, it was like five hundred some dollars. I think it was five seventy five. Of course, this is in the eighties now. Of course, you know they don't went up with inflation and all that stuff. But child, only thing you were paying for that was leather on that bag was the little stripe strips and the handle. The rest of that damn bag was vinyl. Vinyl, okay. And I'm thinking the whole thing leather. I'm like, man, I'm paying all this money. That shit need to be all leather. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> but anyway, after that major shock, I was like, okay, thank you. I've got a name, too. It started with a K. But, uh, she, you know, very, very nice lady. And she told me, you can always ask a price. Because you never know. You might have it, and you might want to negotiate. Even though Louis little, little Vuitton wasn't the store for it, and she let me know that right quick, if as in a hurry. But other places, like car lots, or... Well, let's just stick with car lots, because I know. So you had the Porsche dealership, Okay. Trying to run around at a hundred fifty grand car, so you got a hundred and forty-two dollars. I mean, not hundred forty-two dollars, a <laughs> hundred and forty-two thousand dollars. But this Porsche is like a hundred and fifty thousand. You don't think if them folks 
wanted to sell that Porsche real bad. Or they wanted to get that. They wanted to move something off the lot. They wanted to took that 142000 That's called negotiation. That's called bargaining. And that's called a quick sale. Because most of these car lots around here, they're financing. So anytime they can get some real hard cash to get rid of something that they're trying to sell, they're going to take it. Okay? So I just really get really irritated when I hear people say, well, if you got to ask them how much it costs, you can't afford it. Nah, that ain't what it is. I might be want to keep keep my extra going. Okay? I might be a zillionaire you know, running around here in plain jeans, flip flops, and a little white beater shirt. Okay? But I might got a hell of a lot of stuff that you don't know because you never know what a person has. You don't never know where a person comes from just because they don't feel like being all dressed up plage prim and all that they just might want to look like every day okay other than what they probably do on a daily basis okay you don't have to show riches every time you come out the house and you dress to the nines no ma'am no lord no god okay you could be just an ordinary person wearing some plain jeans plain white shirt plain converse or, or, or nike is however you want to put it and you can have a gazillion dollars in the bank account and people will never know unless you open up your mouth and tell people okay i'm just saying i'm keeping it real so candy you know i, I need you to do better because like i said i like you can i do i like your hustle you about you be having about 17 jobs rolling at one time okay even your daughter rider will look like girl i don't think you need to have many more children but you didn't you know you said i had blaze <laughs> And we still trying to uh, figure that one out, okay? Because I'm like, what is Todd doing? Where is his truck driving business? Uh, that one truck he bought because he was going to go across country in it. And then he changed his mind and he just hired somebody to do that. Ooh, we all trying to figure out what Todd is doing. What investment did you make when you got married to him? Was it to have children? And that's it? Or what, girl? We want to know. The verdict is out right now, but we want to know, girl. We want to know what is going on. Because we don't know. We don't know. But, child, yeah, I was sitting up here blasting everything and anything. I could find out why Candy is doing this thing. Uh, she coming off her chariot to throw tomatoes in the street with the rest of the peasants. Honey, I got that from Mariah. I got that from Mariah. Okay, over at the Merit and Medicine. <laughs> Candy came out slinging mud trying to uh, defend herself and her business. When that, Why do you have a general manager, girl? Why do you have a general manager? Why do you have a team? If your team came and told you what the press was saying about you out on these social media streets, your team should have been straightening that mess out and giving you the results, giving you the resolution. Okay, and then you need to figure out where the ball drop and handle that situation, whether you had to tap somebody on the shoulder, get on the streets for a couple of weeks, you know, so they won't be making this mistake again and, you know, tightening things up. Okay, just trying to tell you how to keep your coin, how to keep food poisoning out of your face, especially when you're trying to serve the public. That could be very costly, Candy. And we need to give some, we need to delegate some things to Todd. The handler, because the general manager didn't get out there and do what he had to do. Todd should have been up there saying, "Okay, sir, what are you doing about that situation that I hear on these social media streets?" Because you know I'm deep, I'm deep. Everything that's canned, I know about. Okay, how are we handling this situation? Okay, because you already know what you want to do, but you're trying to see if y'all in the same alignment or what to do about this situation about people coming at can about her restaurants. Now you can't come too hard because you know she does have those almost failed. And some failed inspections, so. And everybody been doing stories on them. I, I don't think I have yet. I don't think I really want to. I just want her to do better. Do better. Okay, because you got good people coming in now trying to patronize or patron uh, your restaurant by being it being a black-owned restaurant. You're trying to do that thing. Trying to build up the community. Trying to have things for us, by us. And, uh, you know, can't tear you down for that. But, girl, you need to get it together if you're going to stay in the restaurant business, okay? This is like being in hospitality, girl. You got to keep it going. You got to keep it serving up. You got to keep the people happy. Get the people what they want, girl. And that's clean, cleanliness, good food, good environment, uh, and especially with the over out here. You know you need to be on point. Sanitation needs to be up. It needs to be par. Up. The, it needs to be the standard. The standard, Okay. It needs to be raised, the bar needs to be raised a lot higher than what you're giving us. 
because these are uh, failed inspections i'm like cat williams say what you want me to come and sit and dine with you you got inspections failing all kind of wicked way i want to go to org game no can't go to that restaurant they failed last week want to go to blaze seafood steak and seafood uh-uh they were just on the news <laughs> i'm like girl Whew, for the record let it show that yeah you need to stop buying all these businesses if you're not going to conform and put the right people up there to manage them because we can't say you you know you're at fault totally because you're not you just hire some people that are not doing their job and you need to rectify that situation that's all i'm saying but uh y'all go and check out the jasmine brand tell her don't get me for using her statistics and her pictures of her very good thorough research that she did on the OLG not passing their uh, or barely passing I should say their health inspection when she first opened everything was crisp clean and everything she went from a 100 to a 78 you know that ain't right that's damn near D and you know D's we ain't like D's that didn't get us on the honor roll they didn't get us on the honor roll at school and she's sitting up here trying to defend a four dollar ice uh dispute <laughs> I'm like girl we can go down the street if that's the case or you know y'all ice machine is still not working it's got that pink slime still uh coming out I, I don't know what it is but I go down the street get me a whole bag for less than four dollars and come and serve my table up with the ice because I wish you would send me and give me a ticket and think I'll be happy about it child please mm -mm. I'll be telling the law I'll be calling everybody CNN SPN ESPN uh, NBC, CBS, anybody that'll listen to me. God Himself. Yes, honey. Be talking to Him about these prices you trying to throw down my throat. Okay? Girl. And a cheeseburger. Is that a triple cheeseburger we talking about, Candy? Because you charging a chip for some fries and a cheeseburger. You charging $15, girl. Uh uh. I can't I don't understand those prices. I don't understand those prices, girl. $15 for a drink. Alcoholic beverage. God, what are you charging? 10 for uh, uh just a regular soda we ain't in california girl but anyway that's all i have for this video hopefully y'all enjoyed it found some enlightening some laughing kiki moments but being serious you know we need you can and your team to make it good for people to come in there and have a nice time and they don't have to pay for it later by being sick you see what i'm saying that's all i'm gonna say can that's all i'm gonna say girl but um, we need to put Todd out there. We need to stop blaming Candy for everything that's happening in these restaurants she's owning. Because I'm sure uh, Todd is part owner. So somewhere, somewhere up and now he had the whole thing of naming his baby girl after that restaurant. I'm sure. And then we know he named the old lady gang. Instead of him being like some se seasoned, spicy, southern women cookies. Something to that. You know, something catchy. Classy. Uh, ugh. But anyway. That's all I got for this video, y'all. I'm like, hell no. I ain't buying a candy. Get it together. Get it together or leave it alone. Get it together or leave it alone. It can be your blessing or it can be your curse. Those restaurants can be your blessing or it can be your curse, girl. But y'all get down in those uh, comments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this situation, this video. Um, if you like it, love it. Gotta have more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Share my videos out with your friends, family members, and your foes. Okay? They need something to watch and get a kiki out of it too. Okay? Because with Cat Williams and Claire Hustle showing up in my videos trying to give y'all that sidebar or that side eye of these people that we're really talking about. <laughs> it just tickles me. Tickles me to death, child. And got Whitney Houston up there too, girl. That's a hard Rest in heaven, honey. Rest in heaven and peace. But alright, that's all I got for this video. And I gotta go. See you later. See you next video. Bye-bye.